Hello, hello? Hello, hello? Oh no, my microphone! My microphone stand broke! I just realized, what the... <laughs> oh, you can hear me, right? Yeah, you can. Okay. Uh, the microphone, well... Okay. To get Diet Coke, say, ooh, hello, hello. Yeah, my, um... Oh my god, the whole arm. You know how it's got that clamp? The clamp came off. Um... Yeah, this might be really loud because I'm going to be moving the microphone, so I'll be two seconds. Oh my god. Okay, so I'm trying to fix this, but like, it's really broken. <laughs> uh, and, hold on. Yeah, the thing is, it's like, I was very tempted to, um, I don't know, I could probably show my camera, I guess that's fine. Uh, transition. Hello. Um, yeah, my, my mic is, uh, I'm holding it with my arm, so let me, let me fix it. <laughs> Hello, greetings. Microphone arm broke, so I'm trying to fix it. My god, this is painful! This is not working! I think I'm screwing the wrong way. Oh, wait. Is that loosen? Oh, it's loosening it! Oh my god, I was trying to tighten it. Ah, oh, it's the other way. So it's that way. Okay. Ah, oh, shit, man. It's not gripping on very well. Um...
Right. God damn. Oh my fucking. The problem was that the um, the freaking screw thing, because the back of my uh, desk doesn't have much space. So I'm like, I'm like, because it's a slidey one, so I have to slide it, turn, slide it, turn, slide it, turn, because I can't, I can't fully turn it. Britta. I've got the creature. Right there. <laughs> Hello. My baby. My little creature. Oh my gosh. Scrongle. Scrimmy Bingus. She's so cute. Look at look at her face. She's got such a cute face. Such big eyes. Do you want to go? Oh. She's such a scrimmy little bingus. Okay. You sure? Okay. All right. Can't believe I live in the same timeline as Britta. Yeah, I know, right? Absolutely astonishing. El gato. Um, hello. Greetings. Sorry, that was not the intro I wanted. I, my, I. <sighs> Classic. You know, you start a stream or whatever. You start something, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then Mike just went and then fell over, and I'm like, cool. Okay, so I've got to fix this on stream. Right, so we're eight minutes, nine minutes into the stream. We've got some Brita time, so I guess that makes it a bit better. Um, right. Hello. Um, my hair is looking kind of shitty. That's fine. It's in that awkward phase where I'm like, I'm trying to grow it out, right? And it's like, it's at a weird length. You can still sort of see through it. Anyway. Um, shirt in the back and just doesn't hit the same. Man, it's because my windows are open, or my curtains. Um, can we get that? Can we get that? Nice. Ooh. Maybe a little less of that. Um, just a little less of that. I mean, we've got the sun here, so there's the, that sort of the neutral coming in. <clears throat> um... Yeah, so let me let me transition here just so y'all can see. Du, 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 du. All right, so I've been doing some cool stuff. Um, yesterday we left off um, with this, right? So we were able to get shaders to work, which is really cool. I'm, I'm really proud of this, right? So we've got shaders to work. We've got geometry. Like the thing is though, even though it's just one quad, we could have as many quads as we want. Like I wanna make that clear. Um, I didn't demonstrate that, but the way that this, this bit works here, uh, here. So when we're creating the mesh, the, this, this phase here, we're actually adding stuff to it. Like we can have as many as we want. So for example, um, like if I go like this, oh, and I realize my cables are all messed up. There we go. Um, wait, what the fuck is going on? Oh, oh shit, sorry, that was loud. All right, sorry, how does that look? All good? Wait, am I in? There we go. I align it. You can sort of see. You see how my door ends and there's like a bit of my wall? And I align it so it's just boop. And that seems to be pretty good. Anyway. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so what I want to show, just, just for sake of some of you going, ooh, ah, if it's possible. Um, so you can do shit like this, right? Um, uh... 
Yeah, so we can go like um, TL pos um, x <coughs> um, go minus equals point two. I think this is what I'm wanting. Top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. No font interference today. That is true. That is true. Uh, I mean, so she does my Minecraft Mondays. Oh, I love Fauna. She's so amazing. Uh, yesterday, um, I know. I know. Almost everyone probably watching doesn't follow her or Hololive or VTubers even. Um, but um, she's working on. A Minecraft build. So I so it's, it's quite interesting because I love Minecraft, but I've never committed myself to like a huge build, and she hasn't either. And she mentioned that, um, and she's building a massive world tree, which is really awesome. Um, and yeah, like I've genuinely, I've genuinely never seen anything quite like it. <laughs> it's 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 quite impressive, um, and watching it go from. Um, just some concepts uh, to the finished thing. Well, it's not quite finished. She's still working, of course. Um, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I've always wanted to make a massive build. I think that'd be awesome. Right, so what I'm doing here, now if this works, I mean, this would be cool. What this should just do is... Um, because so, normally we we're just creating the quad, but now we're also moving the X and Y position a little bit. This is just because it's a pain to fiddle with this. Um, this should render two quads. Look at that. Barely commit to just playing the game nowadays. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Like, I, I even was playing, I did a stream, like, last week or whatever. And I, you notice that it's not here anymore. It's because I deleted it. Well, I didn't delete it. I unlisted it because I realized... <laughs> Two quads. Um, yeah. So I really, really want to commit to a world in Minecraft. But I think that the only way for me to like fully commit to something in Minecraft, it would have to be multiplayer. So I would make a server for the like the Nycra server. Um, oops. Wait, why was it doing that? Oh, wait, hold on. So if I have a window, but I close the window? Oh, it still runs. And then throws a fuck ton of errors because it's like, where's the window? Uh, so it appears I haven't. Oh, because I changed window update. Ah, yeah, window update now. Uh... Hmm. It'd probably be if n. Um. break um uh, blah 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 so what i'm going to do is uh, oops sorry my god my microphone it's so sensitive i touch it and it goes boom, boom. um right yeah we want to make it return um Interesting. There's no bool type. I didn't think about that. Uh, really? I thought I have a bool type. Yeah. Because then I can go out zero. Right? Oh. Oh, uh, 
out one. Right. So now if I close this, beautiful. There we go. No errors. Okay. Um, in some of the pointless if you don't share it with anyone. Yeah. But then again, big servers are kind of weird. Yeah. Again, if you're just even hearing the word quad, because I'm looking into quad trees from Vox. Oh, man. Quad trees are crazy. Also, you said um, quad tree for your voxel project. It would probably be oct tree, um, unless you're doing some sort of like two D thing. Oct trees are insane. Go grab some. Oh, good. I can make any singularities? I might. Who knows? Um, yeah. So. The next sort of part, I mean, there's lots of there's lots of things I've got on my list that I'll probably do maybe off stream. Like, um, there's a lot of Vulkan functions that I'm still using, and t and like types and things which I'll have to replace with Hephaestus things. So that's just Hephaestus work. Uh, that's just like replacing names, you know. That doesn't really matter in terms of getting things done. Um, in the title, as you can see, I really want to get frames to work. Um, so to be able to render to something and then render that to something else. Um, uh, what's up with the weird keywords, by the way? I saw a what? Well, this is my own abstraction, so um, this isn't quite C. It's a C abstraction. So you got if n, you got loop, you got once. Might have missed this. What's Hephaestus? Hephaestus is the Vulcan abstraction. So Hephaestus is my abstraction that conforms with the C7H16 syntax that I made, um, as it says here. C7H16 conforming Vulcan abstraction. Um, all it is is just a rename of all the functions and stuff, but it also turns the initiator lists into functions as well. So instead of going you know, creating the type and then initiating it with this sort of format, I made it into a function, which I prefer. So it means that in, um, when you're using Vulkan stuff, it would be through Hephaestus. Um, and I'll show you an example of like, like this sort of thing, right? So normally in Vulkan, it would be a little bit different. Um, but this is so you got h underscore, which is Hephaestus stuff. And this is this is what I prefer. This is how I prefer to do things. To me, it makes more sense. It's cleaner. Um, yeah. So um, mm. I really want to test this on Linux at some point. There's probably going to be a lot of bugs, but it'd be fun to see how far it is in terms of being Linux compatible. <clears throat> um, yeah, so the bit that I'm wanting to do next um, is the frame. Uh, okay, can I have the whole word? Um, frame, yeah. So we've got this here. So this is... Because all a frame is, it's a frame buffer, right? Frame buffer. <clears throat> um, but it includes... Um, oh, did I make it a list? Okay, yes. Because this is old code. Uh, for those who are maybe new, or for those who are maybe wanting to know what I'm actually doing... I've essentially, in many ways, already made this engine, right? Um, many, many parts of this engine are already done. Um, that's what this is. That's what the thousands of lines of code is. That's what all this is, right? Um, I lost my place. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Buffer. Command. Shit. Well, this, what is, this is also what happens if you put everything in one massive file. You get sort of lost. 
that's fine. I don't mind this. I'm used to this now. Um, right, we've got images as well, which we'll have to um, import. Um, in fact, I will have to because we've got, um, yeah, frame, which is here. So all, all uh, hept is at the moment is a window and we're able to draw to the window. That's it, right? That's what this is. So we have, we have a vertex flow. We've got shaders and that's all cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, if we want to actually start to make a game, we're going to need certain, uh, system features that are a bit more complicated. So when you think about, when you think about something like uh, a 2d game, um, because Vulkan is not just 3d, right? It's, it's just a rendering API. Um, it's kind of funny actually making an engine, uh, in Vulkan and then using it for just 2d. It's quite amusing because it's like, it's extremely powerful, right? And having an extremely powerful engine for just 2D is kind of cracked. <laughs> um, oh, there's fucking eyelashes. Also, hello space. I didn't. I don't think I said hello. Um, uh, oh, God, eyelashes, my eye. Yeah. So, comparing it to something like Game Maker, which um, is also 2D capable, um, Game Maker runs off OpenGL 3.3 three or something, um, 3.5 maybe. Uh, whereas this is like the latest version of OpenGL 4.6, but better. So it's, it's, it's crazy to me, um, to think about the sort of headroom that this gives being able to render such a large amount of stuff. Um, just so quickly is, is kind of nuts to me. Um, just put a little bit. I'm not very good with super special shaders. That's fine. I mean, I know that also the fact that I'm also programming in my own abstraction can can even like even for people who are familiar with C, this would probably frustrate some people. And I get that. I totally get that. But what I really want is to get to a point where um, it is solid and reliable enough where there is no sort of um, friction. You know, I I'd, I'd love for people to come into this and be like, oh, hey, you know, this sort of makes sense. I can just do this and do that. And um, yeah, I, uh, yeah. Also, I wonder, um, cause I was talking about how you can just do multiple geom uh, types of geometry. It's kind of funky. Cause if I change this topology to line, I'm pretty sure this should just work. And this would just draw lines. Yeah, look at that. It's pretty cool. Um, you're hopping a skip away from making a compiler, to be honest. Okay. I tend to ask for your honesty, because that's not what I'm doing. Um, I'm not making a compiler. That's not what this is. Um, this isn't my own language. Um, this is an abstraction around C. There is no, there is nothing magic here other than knowing how to use macros um, with the C abstraction, uh, this is just C, right? So it doesn't matter. The compiler doesn't matter the setup. And this is also something else that I wanted to make sure because with, um, the creation of hept projects, <clears throat> uh, using my alter tool, which is another part of this as well. I should probably maybe show that. Um, so I've got this tool as well called Alter, which allows you to create hept projects. Um, but all it is, is just CMake, right? And all it does is it grabs the um, headers to make it possible. So if you so if you download Alter and you're like, hey, I wanna make a new game um, and call it um, hept snake um, or something like that, right? And all this does is it grabs um, the required headers and it puts it together um, and yeah, it just bashes it together and goes, bam, there you go. And then all it does is it creates a folder and it allows you to then now um, 
make something inept. Um, because in the includes, <clears throat> you can see that we've actually got the hept, Hephaestus, H7H, uh, C7H16, as well as Vulcan, Vulcan, VK video to make it all possible. Um, and yeah, and you don't need a whole lot. It, it's, uh, <clears throat> I mean, what I can probably do is copy over my latest version of the include, so it actually kind of works a bit, you know? Uh, and then in here, right? So these things, you don't even need an editor in many ways. This is this is something that I wanted. This is the higher goal of Hept and Alter and everything, was that in many ways, you don't even need an IDE. Uh, and you can just go like this, include um, Hept dot H uh, main, because this is how Hept works. Um, we can go print, got the tabs in um, notepad are weird. Uh, or should we go print string? Hello, hept. And then we go loop. Um, and that should work. If I if, like, if I did everything correct, theoretically, when I go build release, this should just work. Let me add a pause here to see if it drops any errors. Bam. Okay. So theoretically, this should, when I open this exe, this should just print hello hept. Okay. Oh, 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 see, okay, no, it's, uh, I know why it's doing that. Uh, because I'm still in the middle of developing, so that's kind of silly of me. But it was looking for GLSL. Anyway, it says hello hept. It did work. Um, it does work. See, hello hept. Um, I just think, uh, oh, just, you know, I'm in the middle of uh, <laughs> getting the rest of it to work. But the idea is there, right? The idea is, um, how big is your monitor? Yeah, you can probably tell the way that I'm like looking around. It's pretty big, um, but it's also really close. Uh, it's a 32 inch. It's not, actually, it's not that big. 32 inch is not that big. It's just really close. Um, my setup is really awkward, so I should probably lean back a bit more. Um, yeah, so the idea is there to have a tool to create a hept project and then being able to just compile it, run it, works, you know, blah. Um, interested why the... What sort of errors it threw up? It's kind of interesting. But it did work, though. Um, is it terminal input yet or just output for now? Uh, terminal input? Terminal input? For hept? Wait, what do you mean? Because, uh, I mean, at, at the moment, you could just you just set the name. Um, do you mean inside hept terminal input? Because you can print. I mean, you just, to... Can I make, like, a text adventure, go left, left? Oh, I mean, yes, technically, yeah. This is still C, so in many ways, I just haven't got a, an abstraction around the, the C, uh, the get. Why use hept for that? Well, that's, well, that's, yeah, I guess that was my response as well. It's like, that's kind of easy in any language, and you don't really need, um, yeah. That's, that is an interesting question, though, because... The purpose of hept is to make rendering in pure C and Vulkan easier. For, or at least mostly for me, right? But I'm just making it public. Um, for text adventure, patch my beloved, yes. For text adventure, that can be done in anything, right? But yes, technically it can be done in hept if you happen to want to, yes. Um, I could make it easier then see if there are certain like functions and wrappers and stuff that might make it a bit better. Maybe there are structures that might make it a bit easier. Um, yeah. In raw binary. Yeah. Um, right. So let's, um, cause I think that the, the next major step is to have a, a frame as in the title, right? Because uh, if I bring up a sprite, 
Um, so all I'm really trying to do, <clears throat> for the most part, um, is so we've got we've got the machine, which I don't really know how to. See, the machine is, is really um, the the freaking GPU. Wow, that is a funky looking. Um, okay, so we got a uh, we got the oh whoa 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 that's supposed to draw a fan. I'm supposed to draw a fan, man. Uh, whoa, uh, whoa, oh, there, Sunny Jim. We don't want that symbol. Um, uh, anyway, this is the machine, <laughs> this is the machine, um, what's that, assembly's just too high, yeah, wait, too high level, low level you mean? High level is, uh, or maybe that's the joke, or maybe that is the joke, um, uh, yeah, and then we've got the renderer, which is sort of like the um, the digital the digital pencil, right? And this is this is the stuff that is linked. These are linked together. Ooh, uh, I don't know why I'm drawing it like this, but it makes sense in my head like this. Linked together, right? So we've got a digital pencil. That's what the renderer is. Okay, um, and this outputs to the window. Okay, it's pretty cool. Wow, just use some lines here. Boop boop boop. Okay, um, and that's pretty cool. But the issue. Oh, uh, hold on. Ah, uh, Ace Bright, my beloved. Anyway, um, but the issue is that we need something in between because if we draw with the GPU, with our digital pe pencil and our hardware, and we're drawing to the window, um, there's nothing in between, right? There's nothing here. And therefore, everything that we draw goes directly to the window. There's no middle step. And surprisingly enough, um, it's actually quite hard to break the the flow, or at least to have two command buffers and be like, okay, you need to draw here and then draw that to there, right? It's like a it's like another another step. Um, and so the frame that I'll be adding in a second is essentially that, right? You can have multiple frames. Um, and then those frames can then be drawn to the window. So, um, so this is the bit that we got to do, pretty much. I just realized. Wait, can, you can see that, right? Yeah, you can. Okay, I was. Oh God. Um, just use potassium propanoids to emit radiation and corrupt. Whenever they encode it, they're touching the keyboard. Pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Um, drink. I'm thirsty. So, looking at my previous iteration for the frame, that's where you can see this working, right? There may be some things I'll need to change. Let's bring this out a bit. Um, yeah, so, you supply an image. Which I, I actually don't think that's a good idea because the image should probably be created in the frame because, I don't know, it kind of makes sense. Um, yo, is that Froge? Is that Froggy Boy? Um, yeah, so we've got the, uh, the, the frame buffers. So we're going to create our own descriptor set, our own render pass, um, and that's sort of the... I don't know. This is the messy bit, and this is this is also why I'm thinking there might be a way to unify this with the um, the window frame, and maybe I could make like maybe they'd be using the same subsystem. So I might look into that. 
because that might save because it'd be like duplicating this there are some issues though um so one thing i noticed when testing this out i found that with vk image layouts god this is something that i didn't even this is like vulcan shit right if you have a whole like if you create an image like a texture literally just a texture it has a format right it has a a format of of um it could be byte pixels it could be float pixels it could be double float pixels um but there's also like other ways to structure it there are ways to read it um that's why in this case it uses the word layout it's currently 5 a.m oh man um that's quite early i can i mean I've, i'm also thinking about streaming a lot later which will probably be the like morning midday for you um but this is something that I was really frustrated with because I found out that like if you want everything to just work with not much effort, you can just use the image layout general. But that is just not as performant. And you can see my comment here where um, the more performant version is with, you know, like depending on the image. And this is the thing, right? Depending on the image, you would have a different layout to be more performant in a different setting. Um, and that's so frustrating <laughs> because it's like, okay, if you have a frame that is uh, like a color attachment, well, the image is a color attach. Oh, like, like, see, this, this is the thing. It's not, it doesn't even make sense. Um, uh, attach reference. Yeah, like layout. And then the attach reference is part of the subpass color attachments and then the subpass is part of this because you have the attachment and the subpass <laughs> it's like oh this is now this is vulcan stuff right this is you can see all the vks right this is the stuff that i've been banging my head on the wall for ages uh, this is stuff that I've been working on for months, and it's still painful because it's so convoluted, but it is very powerful and allows you to do some very neat things. Um, it's just frustrating because <laughs> I just I just want an image, right? Yeah, I just want an image um, that can have pixels thrown at it. Um, but it's interesting because it's like, well, you know, that is not easy. That takes setup. Um, and even here, we've got other things we have to set up for it as well. Because um, you've got the, the frame buffer itself, and you have to set up all the right... And, and it, it's annoying because the image that I'm importing, or uh, I'm including within the function, um, also has to have the right layout when created. Which is also why I was thinking, well, it'd make more sense if the image was created within the new frame function rather than you having to create an image and then, yeah. Um, yeah. It's either that or I go new frame. Wait, is, image, is that actually referenced? Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. So the... Um, oh. Attachments, image view. Isn't that the same? Oh gosh, yeah, this is kind of a bit all over the place. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm just thinking about ways to improve this. So with the frame, it would be nice if the, like maybe the frame has a type. Maybe that's a way to go. Because you would have a present frame, you would have, um, I mean, we're talking about, like, different attachments and the way that you read it. Um, I just don't know if that's over-engineering it. Uh, I say. Okay, where's the frame in this? 
it's after image, which is after the renderer. Okay, and before that, okay. Machine renderer, yeah. Okay, so the frame goes here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think um, because like if I look at the uh, if I search up the the word frame, right? Um, there's quite a few uh, references here, like in the renderer, right? <laughs> And it's, it's interesting because I'm thinking the frame. What's my chair? Um, yeah, because we've got we've got multiple frame buffers for which is all this um, for the window. So the way the window works is it has multiple frames for double, triple buffering, however many um, the hardware can support. It's typically triple, but um, I know something weird. I, I went on, um, I uh, tried to hept on um, another PC that had a uh, AMD GPU. It was on Windows and it worked, uh, but for some reason it was double buffering, not triple buffering. And the GPU is more powerful than my 2060, and yet it was double buffering, not triple. And it was a part of me that's like, that's interesting, but also maybe that's just AMD. I don't know. Maybe AMD prefer double buffering. Um, right. I see. Well, I'd say the image would have to go before. There. Um... Yeah, so my idea, right, uh, was that if the window is using frame buffers, which is here, um, and it's setting them here, yeah, frame buffers, new frame buffer, what is the difference between that and this frame buffer creation? Because <sighs> image layout general. Because this has image layout. Wait, where's. Wait a second. Oh, that's the render pass. Oh, of course. Ah, ah, and then that's where all this is. Right, yeah, so the frame requires a render pass, which is this. Oh, yeah, that's the image views. Okay, so the image views are fine, that's fine, but this, that, and all this at the bottom here. That could probably be removed and replaced with um, the frame object, and then the renderer would have frames. But the problem with this, though, is that I think the frame requires, which it does, the renderer. Um, what does it require? The image. Oh, the image format? Oh, well, that can just be an input. Oh, that's nice. Such an image format. That can literally just be an input. Okay. That's cool. Oh, if that's the case, then this can just be um, here then. Well, then, yeah. A frame can really be. Because I know that. Um, well, oh. Wait, but we've got images as well. Right, with the with the uh, image view, does it have any attributes that I can read? Um, 
example. So let me do that. Um, image view, image views. Oh my god. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> Bridget was trying to climb the fence, and she was just like, Ugh! feeding her too much food. Hello, Missy. Come in. Britta. Yeah, hi. I saw you trying to climb. <laughs> Um, yeah, so what I want to see, though, is... Let's look at the image views. Like... Does it have any... No, it doesn't. Because an image view is... Is an image view a pointer? VK image view. I thought it had, um... Hmm. Maybe not. Oh, is this is this what I'm getting confused with? Because image views creates. Oh right, this doesn't have any. Ah, oh, yeah, I remember now. It's been a while since I've looked at this part specifically. So, actually, here's, here's, here's a little thing about Vulkan, um, and maybe people who use Vulkan understand this. Every single component, like, every part of, com of Vulkan requires its own, like, compartment of memory. Because every single part, like, every single bit inside Vulkan has its own, like, little... There's, like, rules and, and macros and options, and there's little you know, things you can change, and I mean, it's super flexible, but like, holy shit. So when I look at this, I'm like, okay, I've got to remember, what's an image view, right? It's not an image, and it's not a view, it's an image view. So an image view allows you to, it's like, talent, if, I, if I understand this correctly, it, it, um, because you're, you're binding the images to it, but it's like telling the GPU how to read the images, right? Because what we're doing with the image view is that we have the image, you have the type, like what the actual image is, because for some reason the image doesn't contain that. You have the format, because for some reason the image doesn't contain that. <coughs> you have the component mapping, so for the RGBA, because for some reason doesn't contain that. And then the sub-resource range, which I don't really understand. We've got image aspect color bit, which I don't really get. MIP level, level count. I think that's just like MIP map stuff. I don't know. <laughs> and then and then we just create it, right? And then I presume that then it's just a pointer to it. Um, Yeah, because image view is not a pointer. Image view is data. You would have a pointer of that, and then, yeah, cool. So, my thinking was, um, with images, um, here, because the image... So the image does have an image view. Oh my god. Okay. Man. Okay. And then you've got all the samplers and shit. 
because that's the thing. The um, uh, sampler info. Yeah, create sampler. Because I guess maybe I would I should put an option where because uh, not every image has a sampler, right? Um, so, for example, the window uh, image view does not need a sampler. So, I might need to upgrade the way the images work as well to support different types, uh, to like lack of sampler or not. Um, uh, hmm. So that's the case. Uh, I should be able to move this over. But in many ways, I want to make sure that I'm doing this right. Um, because if the frame requires images, and if the image has an image view, yeah, right. Okay, so what I want to do, I guess, maybe it'll be an interesting test, is if I basically duplicate this image format, because I actually haven't got that yet, because um, at the moment it creates the image within the machine setup, sorry, renderer setup, because um, this is for the window, the renderer is for the window. Um, so, um, also, I was just, I'm just looking at the, why does it do that? Why do you need to? Hmm. Some reason I was counting the the um, the views even before the stream started. I'm like, why why do that? Um, okay. So if we were to create our own image and frame, which we will. I mean, I'll need to anyway. But I wanted to incorporate it into the renderer. It might be difficult. So I just need to see, so for example, the um, the creation of the frame requires the renderer, but all that is is for the image format. So that can be replaced, that's fine. But the creation of the image also requires the renderer. Oh shit, is it, and it's also just the format. Oh! But it requires the machine. Okay, the machine's fine because that's machine is going to be is always above. So in terms of um, uh, things requiring, what's the word? Dependency. Dependency. Um, <laughs> till I render. <laughs> Good lord. Um, so theoretically, we can remove the renderer input from the creation of the image and replace it with just the image format, because that seems to be all that is. Oh no! I say, oh! Right, oh no, no, sorry, I just remembered. Um, God, uh, yeah, so the other thing as well. This is, ah, uh, this is the thing that really pissed me off when I got to it with Vulcan. For some reason, for some reason, <laughs> if you create an image, I totally forgot about this. If you create an image, um, the format or the lay is it layout or format, layout, the layout that it's created with, wherever the hell, here, layout undefined. <sighs> so the annoying thing is you can't create an image 
in the optimized format, because you know how I said that there is an optimized versions of things, you can't create new images in that format. Yeah, like upon creation, they have to start off undefined. <laughs> and then you, uh, which is what this block of code is, using single time commands, which but I'm thinking I should probably make that better. Um, you have to convert the image. It's so dumb. I just, you have to send the image off to the GPU, the GPU converts it, and then you get it back. Like, and so my initial idea, which was when you create the image, it does it in this, which is what this is, right? Which is a single time thing. So with Vulkan, if you're creating commands that are being sent to the GPU, you have to create a command buffer and you have to give the commands and then you send it off to the GPU and then you get it back. Um, but since this is just like a, a one-off thing, we just want it's to, just, it's just like, hey, quickly convert this for me. It has to be a single time command where we're creating the command buffer and then we're sending it off and then we're getting the information in line rather than creating a structure. But the problem with this is that I don't really like it. Um, and I'm thinking the... Like the better way to do this maybe is to make it so whenever you want an image to be converted, you send it off and there's another system that in the background um, d does does this for you. Because I, I don't like the idea of creating command buffers willy nilly and tapping into the machine just to run something. I don't know. I don't like that. It doesn't seem efficient to me because like what if you're going to do this multiple times, right? Um, it's, it makes more sense to me that you would, you know, like you would have a, a thing that you want to convert and you're like, okay, but you would tap into the, the real command buffer that's actually happening rather than creating your own one just to convert an image. I don't know. Um, it's been an hour. Interesting. Haven't really done anything. Just lots of talking. Um, but unfortunately, this is a lot of it because this talking I would do to myself and this is not easy and it's hard to think of all the options. Excuse me. Um, okay. From what I understand, I should be able to... I should be able to at least create a frame because all that requires is the um, uh, image format, right? So let's just do that, and then I'll and then and then if I close the stream in the next half an hour to an hour, I can at least feel like I've done something. Um, now we'll do we'll do, we'll do a de decent amount. So um, let's create our object. Um, right, and what I can do, I don't, I don't know if it will have more than one image, because at the moment we've got this, we're using a list, but like, that seems weird to me. Um, the only problem, uh, the only problem that I'm going to potentially face is, um, depth. Because I'm, I'm realizing, like, where's the depth buffer? Um, because we've got like a depth sten stencil, but like, that's not. Yeah, that's just part of the shader. That's not even. So I need to figure out at some point how to do a depth um, image. Wait, how do you do that? I don't even know, man. I just realized, I don't think I've done that, <laughs> which isn't good. Um, Vulcan tutorial. 
because that's the thing. If you follow these tutorials, there you go, depth buffering. Uh, yeah, like, because if I draw two quads like that, how do you... Find depth format. Right, okay, so you... Okay. Uh, okay, then it's just create image. Assume there is always aspect color bit. So we need to change. Oh, okay, so the aspect, so the color bit needs to change. Aspect. Oh, depth bit. Okay. Explicitly transitioning the depth image. There's just so much. Look at this. Well, that's comments. Like, there we go. Hey, it finally worked. Like, there's just so much involved. Um. Depth stencil. Yeah, that's fine. Render pass. Uh, depth attachment. Right, because we've got the color attachments, and then we just don't have the depth attachment. Oh man, that's going to be something... That's going to be a pain. Because in OpenGL, it's not that hard. <laughs> of course. Um... Uh, shit. You know? Uh, but this seems like it taps into the same sort of thing, where you're creating an image, but the image, you have to make sure the image can actually support depth. Um. Hmm. Whoa, that's my foot. Excuse me? Man, I swear. I mean, if I'm balding, I mean, my uncle's balding. I've, I've kind of, I've been, I've been thinking about that, you know, like, am I getting to that age where it's starting to like happen? Man, crazy shit. Um, okay, so, uh, a mature hairline. <laughs> I mean, I've kind of always had a bit of this hairline. Um, and my hair is thin because I shaved it. Um, but I've always had this sort of like these bits, I guess. Because as a kid, I remember growing up, I was like, oh man, I'm losing my hair. But I don't know. It really doesn't matter. I mean, this is the thing. It's like, that's why I shaved my head as well. Because I just, I actually quite like a shaven head. I don't even like hair a lot of the time. Because um, I could, if I, if I, if the doctor says, oh yes, you're going to go bald. I'm like, okay, fine. I don't fucking care. I'll shave my head again. And rocking the rosemary oil. Because does rosemary oil actually help, though? I don't know. It's a real thing, dingus. Oh. <laughs> I guess it's the point, you know, when you get older. Anyway, enough about that. Um, let's, uh... Oh, shit, I've moved things around. Uh-oh, where is everything? It's above this, isn't it? Yep, okay. So, making a frame is weird. Poor guys are cool. The thing is, I don't mind. I genuinely don't. Google mature a bit of a mature hairline truth of myself. A mature hairline. Good lord, man. Right. Because it's like... Yeah. That's the thing. Like, it's, it's, it's not quite... Man, that's so weird. The thing is, I, uh, no hair loss. <laughs> yes. It is interesting, um, that there are different types of balding. And, and why it goes, like, here and leaves like this. Um, 
Yeah, but I couldn't care less, really. I mean... Um, but I do hear that there are, like, some pretty good treatments. Um, you know, if it really does concern you. But, like, I'm looking at this. You know, if your hair gets to a point where, you know, you're, you're, you've lost quite a lot of the sort of crown area, like, I don't know, just shave it off. Or, or get something to fix it, you know? Like, I, I don't know. I, I never understood the shame around a different hairline. Like, I don't, it's just hair. <laughs> it's just hair. Unless your, unless your occupation is around your hair. Like, if you're a hair model, fine, sure. You have all the right to feel bad about maybe losing your hair or whatever, but... You know, who fucking cares? Anyway, um... Right, so I think my frame is going to be... We're going to... Uh, I actually was thinking about the whole linked machine thing as well. And I realized I definitely could make it not like this. <laughs> um, where I'm attaching a machine to the actual object as a thing. But I'm, I'm actually going, well, maybe that isn't a good idea. I should just use the current machine, which is already a global... Um, variable. I really love this font, by the way. This is Intel's new font. It's very nice. Um, seems like a, an American thing to be. Oh, yeah, for sure. I couldn't give a fuck. I'm just finished Forest Gremlin, exactly. Like, why, why do people care so much? I mean, it doesn't, as I said, unless it's occupation, it doesn't do anything for you. Um, yeah. Like, I've, I, I have met people who have personalities and confidence that are beyond their looks um and it, it can change someone from as in to be perceived from someone who's very maybe um insecure and timid to like wow you're very confident um purely just on the way you can present yourself like i don't know something i realize as well you know, something happens to me where, like I said, I lose all my hair or, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something that, um, that's the thing. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like what, what could happen to you that could make you suddenly feel very insecure? Um, I don't know. Having an accident where I lose, I don't know. I lose a ball. Um, I guess that's more of like a private insecurity, like you know, like something, something that's like, oh no, I, I only have one ball. Um, I don't know. I'd feel more insecure about that really. Cause that's like, oh no, I feel that's like a part of my physical body. But something like hair is, is just like, it's just constantly coming out. And if it stops coming out, then okay. It's like nails as well. You know, if you have weird mangled nails who fucking cares it's just anyway um yes with this uh we've got the um I, i'm so glad i can touch type now i used to like really struggle with not looking at the keyboard and, and typing but um yeah uh we need the image format so, oh, wait, but is format the same as image format? I think it is swap chain image format. Oh, uh. Yeah, stop changing your image for Why is it um just format? Oh, okay, fine. Um, right in format. I don't like it because it's like image format. So it's like attachment format. Ah, oh, fuck it, whatever. Um. Yeah, swap chain image format. You know what? 
Fuck you. I'm gonna rename you. You're just gonna be called swap chain format. Bam. Get. Get. Wait. You were supposed to change everywhere. Um, <laughs> dude, <laughs> image till I format, I mean, <laughs> good lord, um, and then we'll see the last thing, because the, the render has the image, form, uh, image format, and then the image has the view and the width and height, right, so my thinking was that I would, um, No, uh, yeah, my thinking was that you would put in, yeah, like you put in the width and height. Like, cause the idea is that it creates um, the image in the frame. And maybe there'd be, um, a frame type. Uh, uh, enum frame type. Uh, frame type present frame type general I don't know what to call these um, but the idea I guess um, ew wait what don't do that Excuse me. What are you doing? You should be going on the new line. Why are you compressing my enums? Um. Um. Do I not have more enums? What is going on here? Oh. First of all, that that is not. Why is that type def? This seems to be the only one as well. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know why it's not. Should be going on a new line. It's not doing that. Uh, that's so weird. <laughs> uh. Okay, I don't know why it's um throwing it onto a new line. Sorry, not throwing it onto a new line when I reformat. That's annoying. Anyway, uh cool. So what I will do 
in format um, maybe they should have the format within the frame would that be maybe that is the way to go Frame temp frame is equal to global new frame out temp frame. Cool. Uh, and this is where we can go temp frame um, format is equal to in format temp. Frame, I guess the whole width height. Um, then there's the type, right? So I'm thinking I'll go type here in type in. Type is equal to in type. Cool. Um, cool. So it creates a new one, sets all the input parameters, and then theoretically, that should just be it. Um, I mean, I would have to do the whole like create new window, oh, sorry, image, create new image within the frame. Because the idea is that this would be, because I really like general systems, right? Being able to go, this frame construction can make any frame, and it'll make a frame for the renderer. So, for example, with the frame buffers, um, it'd actually be. Well, because we've got like. Images is so weird. Uh, because it actually... Here. See, this is the weird thing. So we go get swap chain images. <sighs> Does that mean I should make... Because I was just talking about how the frame made its own images rather than you giving it images. Oh wow, the sun's out. Huh, it's just raining. Um, and my idea was that maybe one of the types in like the present type, actually that would work, wouldn't it? Right, so it's literally getting rid of frame buffers and the render pass because you need those together. Images into image views, those are together, and that's it. Because everything else is separate, and that means that these things can be incorporated because we've got render pass, frame buffer, image, image view. Well, the image, image view their render pass and the frame buffer. Yeah, we can just replace it all. So all we'd have to do is that if you put the type frame type present, it would automatically get the images from the swap chain. That would work really well, actually. Oh, I like that. Okay. Uh, I'll do that. Also, I had a um, slight interjection um, for those who are interested in my abstraction, I had a, a thought about how to abstract the switch case. I've been thinking about this one for a while. Um, uh, I guess it would be in here. 
So for the switch case, obviously the normal, you know, you got switch, which has the, the variable. And then depending on that variable, you would have a case for it. Like if it's one or zero, um, blah, right? Um, you could do things like this, right? I don't know who knows. I I don't know if you know you could do this, but you can actually go multiple cases like this. Um, and then of course you got default. Freaking whatever. Um. So with this, I was like, I don't know. It'd be kind of interesting to sort of restructure a little bit, especially because switch is switch is a weird one. Yeah, switch switches are interesting. So I thought with the case, like what if case was um is Do you see where I'm going with this? So uh this could almost be like if, right? Um, like if this is zero, if it is one, if it is two, like that already makes sense. But <laughs> the problem is that I know that this whole is like two characters, a lot of people won't really like that. Um, yeah, uh, I, what was the other one I had? Um, Instead of switch, I had uh, like check, like check this if it is zero um, or with variable is zero, is one, is two, you know? I don't know. I, I kind of wanted to, um... there's also one for break as well be like skip or something uh, switch case default immersion in all high level languages well the thing is you can still use switch case remember the thing with abstractions is that you can still use it um, it's just that with uh, hept with the whole minimal amount of characters explicit being able to read a bit more directly there's a part of me that's like, I like this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I know that with um, Game Maker, uh, Game Maker has with Except with is for um, objects. That one's an, that one's a weird one. It's so strange going from Game Maker where um, the with keyword. It's like namespace. It's so weird. I like when you're in Game Maker, with makes sense. So powerful. Honestly, it is. Like like, I remember explaining with to my dad young when I was younger. Right. And he, he was like, oh, that's cool. And I'm like, yeah. So you can run code from another object as if the code is the, the object running the code. Like, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Being able to, well, I mean, I mean this is purely just because um, GameMaker is an object orientated thing. So you're able to have functions and variables within objects and then you go with that object do all this and it's like oh you know um like one that i found very useful is that if you have multiple objects this is the other thing with the with keyword it's like a for loop it actually goes through all of the objects like how crazy is that i i it's the thing you're so normalized by it when you're when you're using game maker but being able to go with, there's like with all, that's another one, the all keyword. 
You can use all, and that's that was is with all objects that exist. And I just think like how fucking crazy is that? It's it's so. I really like it, um, and in many ways, I'd love to do my own version of that. Um, uh, in a way that still works, of course, in C, but um, which is why I'm hesitant to use their with keyword. Jumping to other engines makes me miss it so much. I know it's, it's terrible coupling, but it's so so helpful. Oh, it's it's yeah. In terms of coupling, Nicro got fucking crazy because other objects were withing other objects, and so so many objects weren't actually running themselves, and it was just crazy. Um, but yeah, it's uh. Like, for example, yeah, using C and realizing, like, even even going to C++. C++ has object-orientated stuff, but even then I was just like, man. Like, the parents and, like, with and, like, it's just so easy to just deal with objects. And that's what I really love about GameMaker. And that's something that I really would love to tap into um, for Hept. Uh, is to like really have a solid object system. Like it's gonna be hard, but I think it'd be I think it'd be really worth it. Um, yeah. Um. Okay, well, doing an abstraction for the switch case. I can do it another time, right? That's something I can do whenever I want. <clears throat> um, I'll get the frame going, and then I'll probably close up the stream. Um, I think the only thing I wouldn't personally use is the change syntax. Change going to be what you said. Um, that is something that I've considered. I think it'd be, it should actually be well, you can use hept without the syntax already, but the syntax just exists. So making it so the things aren't declared, um, that is possible. That just requires putting defines around certain things and then having it so like if you are in the main and then you just go like um, define and then you just type raw or something like that, right? And that disables boof, all the hept syntax and it's just C. But it has hept functions that you can tap into. So if that's something you really want, right, I was thinking about making that possible. Because um, technically, that actually wouldn't be too bad. Um, as I said, it's just it's just putting blocks around code and then disabling it when you don't need it. So um, You're using bottles now. Bring back the oil. Oh, that's, that's just here. I mean... I, I'll never, I'll never let this go, right? But the thing about this is that this is water. This is peach juice. I've been drinking peach juice. <laughs> ah, shit. Peach water. Um, the thunk noise, yeah. It sounds really cool if you uh, hit your, like, knuckle on it. You ready? Or... Or it's like, how do I do it? Maybe it's if you, um, you like dangle it and you go boom. Anyway. Uh, break parts of the hip syntax. Maybe I want hip loops, but not hip That would be, see, that's the thing. That would be possible. Um, yeah. Like, for example, like you said, with hept loops, I'm really proud of the way that hept deals with loops. You know, you've got loop. You got spin, um, which is just while. Um, you got do once, which is so useful. You got iter, which iterates, but safely. We've got like a, an if check before the for loop, which allows you to go through, iterate things and change the length, but still go through the same length. Like there's stuff that, and repeat as well. Like these I'm very proud of. Um, it's just that, yeah. There are other parts of hept which I know that people may not want. In fact, you can see these comments here. These are broken into sections. Um, like so many parts of hept is in sections, and it's like even with the this, because um, this is all thread safety safety shit, right? Like all of this. 
can theoretically be disabled as well. Um, yeah. So it is possible. Um, it's just not priority. But do know that it's in my brain, okay? And that does matter. Because there's a big difference between someone going, no, I'm not doing that, and, eh, I just, you know, got to find the right time to work on it. Because I don't need that right now. Um, but it is possible. Anyway, so. does I mean, I do want to, of course, make hept good as well. Like, I understand that there are probably some some syntax that you're just like, what the fuck? But, I mean, but I also, like... But if but the if the concept or the essence of it is cool or useful, it's like don't don't be afraid to tell me like, hey Edge, this is cool, but make it just different wording. I mean, a lot of hept is just weird wording, you know? Like I'm I personally I'm I'm really into things like excuse me, into things like oh my god. Three letter types and um Yeah. Yeah, I think sugar is good, but, um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, uh, I think it's more fun, I think above everything, it's just fun to make a syntax, syntax, so, like your own custom esoteric syntax, um, right, so let's, uh, the reason why I said the whole switch thingy, by the way, was this, because I was literally just about to use one, um, so depending on the, um, temp frame, uh, type, um, excuse me, oh, cool, does that for me, isn't that nice, um, do that, and that, I kind of wish cases were, uh, they're not, are they, <sighs> I want indented cases, hmm, because they're aligned with that, it looks kind of bad, I prefer them out one. Where's my clang format? <laughs> uh, clang format, where are you? Uh, indent case labels. Yes. That's what I want. Beautiful. Nice. Haha. <laughs> okay. So the idea was um, with uh, frame type present, it present, I said that weird, present, uh, this is where it would create its own images from the swap chain, uh, whereas general does not. So I guess I've got a, actually in many ways, I could probably just, um, here, swap chain, oh, but I need the swap chain, oh shit, okay, hold on, appreciate C's curly brackets around each case, um, it's, I, yes, I, Look, Python has its uses. I get it. But the one thing, the one thing about Python that makes me want to rip off my skin is the fact that it relies on indents. Um, it is, that's so, that's such a poor design choice. Because not every programmer design, uh, programs with the, the same amount of indents. Um, and as you just saw, like, I like to customize it. I need it to be a certain way that looks best for me. Um, I think it's stupid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, curly, curly braces around everything, I think is just the way to go, you know? For me, when I see curly braces, it means code is in here. It's code braces. Um, that's how I see it, or scope. Maybe scope is another way to look at it. Um, not having that makes it difficult. I agree hard. Exactly. Um, curly brackets give structure. There's there's actually something that I um, 
been thinking about a lot. Because I was originally, by the way, before Hept, I was originally going to make my own language full-on. I was just going to go down that path, but it was way too difficult. This is slightly easier, um, making an abstraction. But I was going to um, involve multiple types of brackets. Um, you know, I love the idea that... Um, I love the idea that you can have um, certain different types of brackets for certain things. You know, this would be code. Um, you would have, like, this would be, um, like, a list or something. Um, I think, I think, um, freaking Rust. Oh, I'm trying to remember. There, there's, um, uh, Because the idea was that these bounding shapes would hold it all. It would all be a list, right? That all that all be lists, but it's like you'd have a list of code because each bit of code is blocked. Um, oh shit, because it ends. It ends with this, right? For each bit. Uh, this ends with comma. This ends with comma. You know what I mean? Like, this is how I see it. That that you have the the bounding structure, and then you have a separator. And I don't understand why this isn't normal. I don't know. It is normal for a lot of languages, right? Um, but I'm pretty sure this would be like types or something. I don't know. Because I think of um, I think of templates when I see this sort of shit with angle brackets. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Making a language I think would be very fun, but there there's just a lot involved. Um, now. The one thing about this that I'm just realizing is, yeah, it relies on the swap chain. Uh, <laughs> that's annoying. Okay, so maybe this won't work the way that I want it to. Because if we want that to be here, uh, and that relies on a swap chain, then that's not really going to work. Um... Because the general doesn't rely on a swap chain. So if you have two types that rely on different things, especially because this relies on something that is created down here, it would need to have an input for the swap chain, right? Because otherwise it won't know. Um, it's either that or I make... Um, because, like... Shit, man. How many swap chains do you need? I can't remember. I thought you need one swap chain. <laughs> Vulcan. Pain. Uh, my throat is starting to hurt. Let's... <sighs> yeah. Um... Okay. I'm going to call it here, probably. My brain is starting to fry. Uh, I'm going to get something to eat. I'm going to come back. Um, talked a lot, and hopefully my talking has also helped me, but maybe helped others to understand what I'm trying to do. But at the moment, uh, I really want to generalize how things are constructed. And so if there's a frame in the renderer, and you're going to make other frames to draw to, um, because you'd want multiple frames to draw to, um, to me, it makes sense to make a unified general structure. But hitting walls like, oh, this needs the swap chain, but the swap chain is made down here. Um, and I don't want to give it a swap chain input because the normal image doesn't require a swap chain. And it's just like, blah, 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 blah. It's just, it's just um... though, am I wrong? Am I wrong? Does, um... Because that's, oh, then again, that is creating images. So maybe we could move away from 
having the image created inside of the frame because that's what that is doing. That's the problem, right? Um, but then, no, because then it feels like Oh, it's got multiple images. Ah, oh, this is so weird. Because the frame... Is that multiple frame buffers? Is that what it is? Because the, um... The renderer... Which is... Here. Oh, it is multiple frame buffers. Yeah, okay, because it's just, there's so much involved, man. You have frame buffers and then render passes, but then you have to have images and image views for every frame buffer, but then you have to multiple frame buffers depending on how many, how many frickin' in the swap chain, and, uh, Vulcan, oh my god, too much for my head. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to think about this. Um... Please don't use Vulcan. <laughs> it's fucking powerful. It is so cool. I can do some amazing things to Vulcan, but it record. It's just this. It's just me going like, I have all these components, and I don't know how to like organize them, and like how do I? And then you get an error that's like, oh, actually, you need multiple frame buffers, and I'm like, oh shit, I thought I only needed one frame buffer. So that means I need multiple render passes, which need multiple images and render views and blah blah blah. So, I'm going to have some food. I'm pretty hungry. Uh, I'm going to think about it. I mean, honestly, Cardboard, I'm telling you now, the state that Game Maker is in right now is so fucking good. It is so good. And, and every day I wake up and I'm like, I could just make a game with Game Maker. <laughs> but, like, especially with Strux, because they added Strux basically after I made Nicro, right? Um, ever since Strux, it's basically C++ now, right? Um, and you can make a phenomenal game with it. So, I don't know, it's weird. But I'm already in this, uh, everyday game maker gets close to JavaScript, it's a good day. But, but better, I think, I think game maker, cause it's, it's orientated around specifically constructing games. JavaScript can suck my dodecahedron, um, it's not that great. Um, but GameMaker and GML is really quite, um, amazing. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna head off. Um, you, there's Britta. There she is. Cleaning herself. Licking herself. Um, yeah, yeah. I see you guys around. Uh, it's a good little stream. Wasn't super productive, but that's alright. Um, and I'll be streaming again at some point. Episode 7, so. I'll see you guys around. Goodbye. Goodbye.